Hi! Welcome to episode 364 of The Corner of Knit and Tea. I'm Laura, also known as Fluffy Kira on Instagram and Twitter. I blog over at thecornerofknitandtea.com, and that's where this episode and every episode show notes will be. And I have an Etsy shop called The Corner of Knit and Tea, where I sell my hand spun yarn and knitting patterns. Hi, how are you? It is Monday, February 7th, and I hope your week is off to a great start. It is sunshiny and in the 40s today, so I'm taking it as a good sign. Um, it doesn't mean spring is on the way, it just means we have a little bit of a reprieve this week <laughs> in the weather from being so cold. So I am still cozied up in my um, warm woolens um, and kicking the week off um, with lots of work and a uh, few other exciting things. So how are you? I hope that you're doing well. Um, I hope that you had a lovely weekend. I got all of my chores out of the way on Saturday, which was fabulous because then yesterday I could sit and knit all day. And I did. I knit and I spun. And um, other than a couple loads of laundry, I had nothing to do but just be yesterday. And it was amazing. So I think I am going to try that in the future. Um, although this coming weekend I'm going to be a part of um, Laura Nelkin's Knit for Foodathon, so I will be knitting from 10 a.m. to 10 p.m. in the Knitathon, raising money for uh, food insecurity and groups, charitable groups that support that throughout the nation. If you want to check that out, I do have a link to my fundraising campaign in my uh, profile on Instagram. Um, and I will put a link in this week's show notes just in case you want to donate. If you do, thank you in advance. If you already have, thank you so, so much. Um, and keep an eye on my Instagram or other social media channels next weekend because I will be posting on Saturday throughout the day on what I'm working on. And I will also do a recap here next Monday. So I have finished some things this week and started some things, and so I have some progress to show you, not as much as I had hoped, as always, um, but I do have a few things to share with you, so let's get started. Today I am drinking coffee, um, and it, <laughs> every time I do that I think, wow, this is supposed to be the corner of knit and tea, so now do I call it the corner of knit and hot beverage? <laughs> So I made a pot of coffee over the weekend because it sounded really good and now I am trying to um, finish it off. I generally drink a cup or two and then I put it in the fridge and um, drink it over the next few days. Today's I am drinking hot and I'm drinking it in my Oive all day mug, which kind of cracks me up. My mother-in-law got that for me uh, two Christmases ago and um, the coffee is delicious. It is a local blend um, from a, um, well, it is a blend from a local roaster. We have uh, the roastery coffee coffee here in Kansas City and they have a really excellent, I think it's a French vanilla caramel and it's one of my favorites. So that is what I am drinking, which will give me a little strength to get through the rest of the afternoon because I still have more work to do when I'm done here. But I did want to podcast while it was light out and um, share some of what I have been working on. So by far the biggest accomplishment this week is I finished my mom's sweater. I did not quite finish it in time to block it, so it is still here in its unblocked glory, but I think you'll get most of the gist of it. I have woven in all my ends, although I still have a few to trim after. I usually like to um, wait and trim the ends real close until after I have blocked, just in case they stretch a little bit, um, because I hate it if they poke out and then I have to try and hide them again. So um, you will see a few um, threads here and there, but all ends are woven in and I attached buttons last night. So this is the Night Out Cardigan from Hohi Locatelli. It is a lovely top-down raglan pattern. It is a plain, simple cardigan just with some ribbing at um, the cuffs and hem. And then the one thing it does have is it has this really nice lace panel um, down the sides of the button bands. The button bands are knit contiguous with the rest of the sweater. So basically once I finished the sleeves, I was done. Last week I had about half the first sleeve done. I went 
went ahead and finished that and then I cast on and finished the second sleeve. Um, the beautiful yarn that I used is Manos del Uruguay Alegria, which is their fingering weight yarn. It is a blend of superwash merino and nylon um, and it is machine washable. I don't know that my mom will machine wash this sweater. I sort of hope she won't and I'll include care instructions, um, but it can be machine washed so it is also good for kid stuff. I have made kid stuff and I've also made myself a couple pairs of socks that I do throw in on the delicate cycle to wash. I do not dry them in the dryer. Um, so it is in the colorway thistle, which is this rich purple. Um, I don't believe that the um, that the sheeting is quite as severe in person as it comes across on the camera. Um, it is a little more maybe than I would have liked. Um, I might have liked something a little more semi-solid, um, but it's what's done is done and I do think it's a color that my mom will enjoy. The buttons are mother of pearl buttons, which I got from my friend Anna's um, button jar, which um, is not a euphemism for anything. It is a quite literal large jar of buttons that she bought at an estate sale and I really liked these. I had a couple different sizes and I thought this size was the best. So this is basically done except for a blocking and a final trimming. I am pleased my mom's birthday is the first um, week in March. So very, very close to, um, uh, so I have plenty of leeway to wash and block before I send off. So that is this week's project but I am pleased to have this one off the needles. Um, I knit it in approximately a month. It might have taken me a little more. I don't remember precisely what my cast on date was. I do know that my cast off date was I finished this on uh, Friday. No, I finished it on Saturday, which is why I didn't have time to block it before today's show. Um, I chose not to block it because I knew that it would still be wet and then I wouldn't be able to show you. Um, keep an eye on my Instagram in the next week or so. Once I block it, um, I will put up a finished photo, finished, 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 um, and I will definitely um, wash and block because I would like the lace to, um, to kind of relax a little bit. Um, but I do think you can kind of tell what it looks like. Anyway, so that is my mom's sweater done and dusted. So it feels nice to have that out of the stash. Um, just as that one left the stash, I got a new box of yarn from Zen Yarn Garden to knit more samples. So the first sample that I am knitting is actually for an upcoming tutorial Tuesday that we will be doing in March. The pattern that I am knitting is called Crosshatch and it is by Shayna Billow and um, she didn't design it in Zen Yarn Garden yarn but we are knitting up a sample and she will be teaching the class um, with the sample. So um, it is a pooling pattern. I don't know if you've seen the recent trend in yarns that have a small section. Um, well so pooling yarns are yarns let me rewind just a little bit. Pooling is when colored sections of yarns um, gather or stand out or create something that looks a little bit like a pool of a lot of color in one place. Um, I was first introduced to pooling yarns sort of back in the, um, interestingly enough, back in the uh, days of wool mice um, because there were a few um, knitters on Ravelry who decided to do pooling patterns based on wool mice. Um, wool mice had a um, specific color repeat that was a certain number of um, that was a certain number of inches and the deal is that if you make use of that color repeat appropriately if you can kind of lay out and identify what that repeat is you can design knitting or weaving based on that and you can actually make the colors pool. So for instance I have knit shawls where the colors all pool to sort of make columns um, so that you have kind of a gradiated um, scarf. I have also done it in weaving where you kind of gradiate the color throughout. So um, I know that's kind of a hard concept. You'll be able to see from my sample a little bit more. Um, more recently there have been patterns with pooling yarns where most of the yarn is dyed one color and then a small section of the yarn is dyed a drastically different color. And basically you would knit kind of a simple um, garment or a scarf or a project and then when you get to that color um, you do something different with it to emphasize um, the stitches. Um, one of the um, patterns that's available is called The Dance. It is by Suzanne Nielsen and it is actually a Zen Yarn Garden pattern. It is a lovely cowl and it is called The Dance because it is worked in um, 
a colorway, uh, one of Zen Yarn Garden's Art Walk colorways. I think it's called the Dance Class, and it is modeled after a, uh, I believe, a Degas painting. Um, and most of the yarn is kind of a um, green, blue, um, taupe color, and um, there is there are a few flashes of red in it. And so the cowl is worked such that you do um, a certain stitch when you get to the red section to kind of emphasize that part. There are also quite a few other patterns on Ravelry. Um, Floating is, um, and I cannot remember the designer's name, I'm such a bad podcaster. <laughs> um, floating is another pattern. It is a shawl and it is worked in gray with pink blips and every time there is a pink blip um, a lot of times what will happen is you wrap the stitch or you knit a bobble or you knit something that sort of makes use of that color and keeps it um, to that section. So that said, I am working with um, a Zen Yarn Garden Gradient Trio. So it is three skeins of yarn that look like this. And Zen Yarn Garden's um, sections for pooling are a little bit bigger than some of the other yarn companies, and that is because they already dye these colorways for other things, and so they have not varied their dyeing method um, quite to be specific for pooling. They have varied their color method. So what I will show you is that when you unwind this skein, you can see that a large portion of the skein is um, probably, well, maybe not quite two thirds, but a large portion of the skein is a dark purple and it is semi-solid. It has a little bit of variation, but not much. And I'm sorry if it's coming off blue. Um, I can see it's kind of blue on the um, computer screen. So I don't know whether it's coming across purple or blue. It is purple. Um, and then for the color pop portion, they added a section of white with some yellow and red um, speckles. And so that creates quite a contrast. And so when you use Shayna's crosshatch pattern, um, which calls for a crosshatch stitch, which is basically a little bit like a cable, um, and I don't want to give too much away, but I have seen it used in other patterns, um, which is basically a little bit like a cable in terms of crossing your stitches, you end up with something that looks like this. Um, the crosshatch pattern is a scarf. It has kind of a pointed end where you start at a point and you grow it, and then at a certain point you stop expanding and you're basically knitting on the bias um, to keep the... Uh, to keep the shawl going. So this is what I have so far. And as you can see, it's got sections of purple. And then in the sections where the yellow and white and red comes up, we do little cross hatches. And some of them are cleaner than others. In some sections, I end up with a lot of yellow stacking on top of yellow. Um, and so there are some sections that are, like I said, not quite as clean. You can see little bits of it, the color tailing off. And um, with a lot of pooling yarns, um, the color repeat section is a little bit smaller, so it's a little bit easier to control. Um, I will say that the one thing that this pattern suggests and that I have had to do a few times is um, if you get too much of your, if you get too much cross hatching stacking up on top of each other, like maybe down here, um, you can break the yarn and um, skip a small section and start again to try and scatter your pattern. I will say I had more trouble down at the bottom before the color, re before the repeats were established and I could get more sections of um, the purple in the background. So that is what I'm working on. I have three skeins total. This is what I have left of my first skein, and then I have two more skeins, and so I will um, be working it to a certain point and then working the point back down on the other direction. So that is what I'm going to work on this week. Um, this will be one of the knits that I plan to work on during the knit-a-thon, um, and I don't know that I'll be finished by next week, but wow, that sure would be nice. So this is definitely my focus project for the week because we'd love to get it off to the photographers and um, be ready in time for a March tutorial. Tuesday where Shayna will go over how to make the stitches and some of the other tips and tricks for pooled knitting. So the pattern is available on Ravelry now and if you have um, yarn that you would like to use for it by all means. Um, it is a well-written pattern. It has lots of tips and tricks. It has photos and I believe there is also a video tutorial. Um, I ended up not needing it because she also like I said has great photos and I had actually done this crosshatch stitch before. It's been in a few other patterns. Um, uh, it, the, the mechanics are fairly simple, even if the um, actual stitches are, um, the actual number of stitches involved is slightly different. So that is what I'm working on, and I will um, definitely be showing that to you next week. And maybe if I'm lucky, I'll be done. Um, but if not, you'll see it maybe two more times. So 
The next project on my needles has not gotten much work this past week, but now I hope to um, make a lot more progress on it this week now that the sweater is done, and that is my aunt's shawl. I showed you last week I'm knitting a color affection for my aunt out of three colors. Two are from Toil and Trouble and were dyed together kind of as a special 2021 set, and it's kind of a dark plummy purple and a lighter kind of shaded um, lavender and I am knitting those together with a uh, gray with some sparkle which is from Treasure Goddess. It is her sparkle sock base um, and it is gorgeous. It is called Pieces of Eight. All of her colorways are pirate themed um, and you might be able to see there's a little bit of um, Selena in there so it sparkles. Anyway I have not gotten very far on this. Last week I showed you a small um, gray semicircle and this week I show you a slightly larger gray crescent shape. Um, because I am not finished with the first section, which is all one color. My hope is to actually finish this section this evening, um, because I have lots of knitting time planned and only this one and the pooling project. And so my plan is to hopefully finish this section tonight and start to add in the second color. So hopefully by next week I will have more to show you on that. Um, I don't have anything else on my knit list right now. I do have another sample for when I finish the pooling scarf. Um, and I might like to knit a charity hat this month, um, but the month is still young and um, this I, I really do want to get this done this month if I can. So um, those are the those are the yarns, the knits that I'm working on right now. So quick sip of coffee and then I will um, share with you some spinning and then I'll let you go. So I did do um, some spinning this week and I spun a gorgeous braid, part of which I showed you last time, which is from Huckleberry Knits. It is, I believe, an 80-20 merino blend. I, again, didn't check, but it will be updated when I put it in my shop. Um, an 80-20 merino blend in the colorway Dragonfly, which was blues and greens and purples and pinks. And what I ended up with was kind of an overall bluish purple skein with lots of jewel tones in it. So it is really pretty. I don't know if you can see all the color variation on the monitor here. Um, I, it probably just depends. My, um, my camera has a little viewing window and it spits it back at me and it has a really hard time with blues and purples um, so I can never tell precisely what is going on there. This is a delicious blend. It is so soft and it really just begs to be worn close to the skin. It is approximately between 330 and 340 yards, I believe. Um, I will know more after I give it a bath. I haven't had a chance to do that because I just plied it up on Saturday. No, I plied it up yesterday. <laughs> The days all run together. I plied it up yesterday afternoon and again I did not wash it because I wanted to show it to you on this podcast and if it was still sopping wet that wouldn't be a good idea. Um, so this is just it's absolutely lovely. I think it would make a gorgeous cowl um, or a chalette. Um, just something that you could wear close to your skin. Um, it also would be really nice as the yoke of a sweater if you wanted to do um, hand spun for a yoke or like for a color work yoke um, and then pair it with a uh, semi-solid for the rest of the sweater. So it's just gorgeous. It would also make lovely socks, although it is not superwash, and it is, um, it does have both merino, really soft merino, and silk. That's the only reason I suggest wearing it um, in objects that are a little bit closer to your skin. Um, the socks would probably be sturdy enough because silk does add some strength, um, and it just, it's got a little bit of shine. It is just really, really lovely. Um, uh, I'm blanking. I was going to say she does a lovely job dyeing and I, Scarlet, Scarlet is her name. Scarlet does a lovely job dyeing um, Huckleberry Knits fibers. They're always really saturated and gorgeous. She also dyes yarn. She doesn't do fiber super often um, and she is just really a lovely person as well. Um, so I would encourage you to support her business. Um, and this one will be up in the shop in just a couple days. Uh, like I said, I just need to wash it and um, and then do a final tally. So I would say this should be in the shop probably on Wednesday. If it's something you're interested in, let me know and we can arrange that. So that brings me to what I'm spinning this week. This was the December Club from Hello Yarn, and this one is a little bit crisper. It is um, called a limited edition American wool blend. So I believe it is just wool from sort of the common market. Um, it is, uh, it's not 
scratchy, but it is not soft. It is not merino. Um, it doesn't beg to be worn close to the skin. This would definitely probably be better for outerwear um, or, you know, socks, hat, mittens, something that um, needs to stand up to a little bit um, more sturdy. Um, if you if you like um, more rustic feeling wools or slightly rougher wools, this one would definitely be for you. And it is in kind of a gorgeous colorway. It is called Just a Glimpse and it is red and orange and purples. So it's got some really nice sections there. And then it's also got some pale greens and lavenders. So it's kind of a study in contrasts. Um, and I haven't completely decided how I'm spinning it yet. The first half I spun in small strips and I can't decide on the second half whether I will spin it in longer color runs or if I will try to um, spin it in small strips so I can get kind of maximum barber pulling. Um, it does kind of remind me, I believe this might have been the December offering, and it does kind of remind me in Christmas, just of Christmas, with the brown and the red and kind of the light green here, but it also has that lavender, so I don't really think it's specifically a Christmas colorway, although it does remind me of winter, so I just decided that this would be a nice one with some contrasts to spin up for this week. It is spinning up beautifully, it's drafting beautifully. Um, like I said, it's just not super, super soft. Um, and this one we'll have for the shop as well, um, hopefully towards the beginning of next week. My goal is to finish spinning the singles on this this week so that I can um, break my knit-a-thon up a little bit, just um, use slightly different hand motions and ply some yarn while I am um, participating in the knit-a-thon. So I realize it is a knit-a-thon, but I, I feel like if I'm crafting, it doesn't really matter. And last year, I remember I did take a break somewhere in the middle to ply and my hands appreciated the break from knitting. So um, I am, I should have lots and lots to show you next week because um, I am anticipating Saturday to be super productive, um, even if I don't get all my chores done and I still have to do some of them on Sunday. But I am anticipating that if I'm going to be crafting for rough, 12 hours straight with with some small breaks um, for eating in the middle, um, I feel like I should have lots and lots of crafting to show for myself next week. So two knits in progress, one spin in progress, and hopefully I will make um, significant progress on those so that I can start some other things this month. Like I said, I do have another sample set for Zen Yarn Garden when I finish this one. Um, so, and I hope to get that one done before the end of the month too. I guess I'm, it's only the seventh today, so I still have three full weeks left in the month. So hopefully I can crank out both of those. Um, and then it is a start, it's time to kind of start planning. This weekend I, um, looked at some children's sweaters because I'm trying to get some ideas for the kids sweaters that I want to make for their birthdays in October. I know their birthdays are in October and it's a little early to think about it, but I do like to think about it early so that I can work on their sweaters in the spring and summer so that I don't feel quite so rushed in the fall. Also because then I do lots of winter knitting. So and and fall knitting season picks up with lots of samples. So thank you for joining me today. I hope that you are having a lovely week, that your Monday wasn't too difficult getting back into the swing of things, um, and that you have some crafting time carved out for the rest of the week. I um, will say, as I always do, happy knitting, happy spinning, happy sipping, and I'll see you next week. Bye!